Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We we'll look at verses 12 through 16. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. The title message is Lasting Loyalty. Lasting Loyalty. Lasting Loyalty. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. The Bible says, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only Pontite, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only has immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Brother Jake, could you please pray for the message? Lasting loyalty. Loyalty is something that is hard to find this day and age. Everybody is out there for, the, for themselves. Everybody is selfish, rightfully so, because that's the nature of human being. However, loyalty is hard to find amongst Christians this day and age. That's why people can stand for sound doctrine, strong doctrine. That's why people can stand other brethren. That's why people can't stand the hard preachings, because they have no bone of loyalty in them. Yeah. They're weak. Amen. I mean, you as a Christian can be very weak, yeah. and you and I have to admit that we are very vulnerable. Yeah. Every time you think that you're strong, every time you think that you could do this on your own, that's when you're going to fall. Amen. That's why there's no loyalty amongst Bible-believing so-called Christians. All you care about is your own goods. All you care about is your own fleshly desires and pleasures. When you look at the Word of God, when you look at the history of all these Christians and history of you know, Old Testament saints that you see, they have one thing that's lacking in a lot of people today, and they have loyalty. You know, it goes beyond faithfulness. Loyalty is shown by what you stand for and supporting, especially when it comes to someone and something that you believe in. If you have loyalty, you'll be standing by someone and supporting them no matter what happens. A lot of times, children have loyalty to their parents because parents have been a good father and good mother, and they love them. They love them to death, and they know that amongst each other. So when their parents are being accused or whatnot, they always stand beside their parents. Same thing. You know, parents always are loyal Majority of the time, I'm saying almost all the time, to their children. Even if the child is accused of killing somebody, parents stick to their children. 
I haven't really seen any instances where parents will just desert their children. Usually they're just horrible parents, right? But many times, parents, even if the whole world's against their children, they're always standing by their children. That's loyalty. However, when it comes to Christianity today, amongst Bible-believing Christians, there's no loyalty. All you care about is your, okay, how can I be noticed? How can I be that someone that can get applauded from other people? How can I be that person whom the people see as a blessed of God? All you care about is outside appearance. But even your outside appearance doesn't really work, right? You have something called, you know, Generation Z disease. Amen. What you have is if you don't feel like it, you don't do it. Right. Right. If you can't endure it, you stop, yeah. right? If you can't stand, you just fall. That's the mentality of all these Christians this day and age. And obviously, you can't even have a allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ and devotion to Lord Jesus Christ and conviction and commitment to Lord Jesus Christ if you're not even saved. Right. Amen. So that's number one thing. If you don't know where you're going after you die tonight, your loyalty will always be to the devil, the yeah. Satan. Yeah. According to John 8, 44, ye are of your father, the devil. Yeah. So don't kid yourself. If you don't know where you're going after you die tonight, you will be loyal to somebody, yeah. and that's to the devil. Get saved. Because on Friday, as we were doing street preaching, I was witnessing to this young man, and you know, he heard everything, and then he even prayed. But he didn't do it from his heart. Oh, no. See, that's why prayer does not save you. Right. You have to do it from the bottom of your heart. Amen. One thing that he said he couldn't understand was that, you know, during the prayer, you, know, you admit that you're a sinner yeah. on your way to hell. He said, I'm not a, that type of a sinner. Oh, no. He didn't kill anyone. You know, he didn't rob anybody. And he thinks that he's not a sinner. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. Amen. Anything, I mean, if, if you ever disobeyed your parents, you're a sinner. Yeah. If you ever lied before, you're a sinner. If you got angry yeah. for no good reason, you're a sinner. If you ever had a dirty thoughts, yeah. you're a sinner. If you ever had a contemplation of doing, you know, sin, that's a sin. So you're yeah. a sinner. Amen. Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. So everybody's a sinner. Amen. It was, you know, heart. But he's not the first case. We have numerous, a lot of times when we talk to someone, they don't think they're a sinner, right? Yeah. But you are a sinner. Amen. Not because you committed sin per se, you're born as a sinner. Amen. That's why you need to get saved from hell. Yes. And if you don't know where you're going today, the Bible says now is the day of salvation. So you must get saved today, yes. right? You know, talk to me, talk to the brethren. Yes. You know, you have to know where you're going because the Bible says life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Amen. And it could, just like that, our life could be gone, you know, yes. right? You and I could have sudden heart attack and we could be gone. We could be, have an accident, right? Yes. You know, you could be, you could be, you could, lightning could hit you, right? right? We have a terrible hurricane that went through, you know, southeast. I mean, people, you know, they're struggling. You know, a lot of people have lost everything. Yeah. And also, you just don't know what's going to happen in your life. So one thing that you have to make sure is know where you're going after you die, not trusting anything but the blood-bought sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But if you add anything else, your feelings, right? A lot of people say, you know, I, was, I went to church even before I was born, in my mother's womb. So what? I mean, did you understand anything? No. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't think so, right? You know, oh yeah, I was filled with the Holy Spirit the wrong way. And I spoke in tongues, you know, I saw visions. You know, Jesus talked to me, and I saw him talking to me through the clouds and letters, right? Those are all from the devil. Yes. Only by confessing and trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, plus nothing, no works, no experience, no feelings, you, you get saved. Amen. You know, as you know, Brother Fred, you know, did it, 
told us during his testimony, some people are in the ministry for like 30 plus years and they, don't, they weren't saved the whole time. So it doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. It only matters if you did it from your heart and you know for sure with the right gospel because there are a lot of wrong gospels out there. Yes, there is. So if you want the true loyalty and if you want that loyalty to last forever, this loyalty requires you know, conviction, allegiance, right allegiance. Now that's point number one, you know, if you're writing down. Loyalty requires right allegiance, right? You have to be allegiant to somebody in your life. Amen. You are born as someone who's supposed to be allegiant to some supernatural being. That's what you see out there, out in the jungles of Amazon, out in the jungles of Nile, out in the all kinds of places where they don't know anything about the Word of God, they don't know anything about other civilization, but they worship a being right. or beings, yes. right? Human beings are born with the desire to worship somebody. They want to show their allegiance and loyalty to someone. That's why they sacrifice animals, yeah. you know, crocodiles yes. or whatnot. And they even sacrifice, you know, human beings. Yeah, their own children. So you and I are born with that desire. But who are you, you know, who are you showing your allegiance to today? Who are you loyal to today? Is it yourself? A lot of people really, really love themselves. Right. Whether you're ugly, whether you're pretty, yeah. whether you're handsome, whether you're big, small, right? Hey, almost everybody, they just love themselves too much. Amen. Right? Do you look at yourself more times in the mirror or in the Word of God? No. Let's ask that question. Because some people, man, I'm telling you, it's not just about women, right? Yeah. A lot of men this day and age, Amen. right? young boys and girls, because yeah. of how the society is turning into, they just love mirrors. Yeah. I'm surprised not everybody's carrying mirrors this day and age, right? Even the boys, because they just love to look at themselves in the mirror. I guess, you know, some kids, you know, going through puberty have a lot of zits, right? You know, pimples, they're like, oh, is it still there? Or is it growing? Or is it turning more red, you know? Or they're just looking, oh, how's my hair, right? Yeah. Obviously, you have to dress moderate and you have to show modesty. You know, you don't want your, as a Bible believer, you don't want your hair to be like all red, spiky, you know? <laughs> or like they say, what do they call it? Like gothic, right? Yeah. You know, you don't want that kind of influence, right? You don't want like, you don't want to have like a hundred earrings on your face, right? right? You know, your tongue, yeah. you know, everything. I don't even know how they do it. And all those things are bad examples. Yes. But who are they allegiant to? Who are they loyal to? They're just loyal to themselves. Right. Or they're loyal to the devil. Yes. Or they're loyal to the world. They're loyal to their celebrity. I mean, if your role model over here is unsafe, you know, fornicating, Hollywood, celebrity, something's really wrong with you. Yes. Right? I mean, you're, as a Christian, your role model shouldn't be some actor or actresses in Hollywood. Right. What, are they, what do they stand for? They stand for Hollywood. Yeah. What is Hollywood all about, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. everything about the world, everything that glorifies about the world. Yes. I mean, and your, your role model can't be, you know, Saul, right? Your role model can't be Delilah, right? Your role model can't be like Nebuchadnezzar, like those, right. you know, proud people. Absalom, right? Just because he was, you know, handsome to look at. Oh, yeah, you know, so I'm Absalom. I mean, careful what you say, Amen. right? You have to understand, you know, who you are loyal to today. I mean, number one thing is that you have to be loyal to Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. No matter what. Yes. Right? You have to stand for Lord Jesus Christ. You know, faithfulness is, is like a... You know, working process, you're, you know, it's internal, more of an internal, you know, you're showing inward and you're, you have committed to the Lord. But loyalty, a lot of times, is external, right? Are you going to stand for Lord Jesus Christ, especially under pressure, right? If someone were to ask you right in front of you, are you a Christian? What are you going to say? 
uh, give me a definition of Christian, right? You know, what are you trying to ask me? It's yes or no. If Christian means trusting Jesus Christ and Him alone as my Lord and Savior, I'm a Christian. Yes, I am. I mean, do you stand for what the book says, King James Bible? There's no reason to run around the bushes, walk around the bushes, trying to, you know, be indirect about it. Right. Loyal persons are direct. Yes. Yes, no, that's it. You know, during the back in the day, even non-Christians, they just had two things to say. Yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. These days, every person is like, you know, let me tell you my side of the story, right? Oh, let me tell you why this happened. Blah, blah, blah. Yes or no? That's what Christian should be. Did you do it? Yes or no? If you didn't do it, it means no. There's no excuses involved, yeah. right? If Lord Jesus Christ tells you during the judgment seat of Christ, have you been loyal to me by reading my word every single day? You're like, oh, Lord, you know, let me give you some excuses, right? You know, my body wasn't doing good. Uh, you had a sound mind. You could have still read the Bible, right? Oh, you know, I was too busy with work. You know, you're telling me that you're busy with work? When I was praying for you and the whole world, you know, sweating, sweat drops of blood, you're telling me? I'm like, oh, no, I was hurting. I was sick. You know, I'm not taking it lightly. People's, you know, sick and everything. You know, my wife, hey, you know, you know, major surgery and everything. So I don't take it lightly. But Lord was disfigured beyond human imagination when he died on the cross for you and me. Shed every single blood. For you and me, and you're set telling the Lord, Lord, I was hurting too much, so I couldn't spend time with you. I couldn't pray. I couldn't read your Bible. Man, you're a fool. Amen. You let the things of the world, you let the worldly mind, humanistic mind, take control over you, saying that excuses after excuses after excuses justifies all the sins that you're committing. Yes. How are you going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ? Are you really choosing to stand by Lord Jesus Christ, even through the thick and the thin, right? I mean, you're like, oh, work situation, you know, it's tough, right? But if you could make the right choices, you have to make choices for Lord Jesus Christ. You can't make choices for your wife. You can't make choices for your husband. You can't make choices for your children. Number one is always Lord Jesus Christ. And the rest of things work out. Work itself out all the time. But, you know, these Christians think that, oh, you know what? You know, pastor preaches you. You have to be loyal, faithful to your spouses. So. No, you always skip the first part. Number one is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? If you have to choose between your spouse and Lord Jesus Christ, who are you going to choose? Lord Jesus. There shouldn't be any hesitation in your answer. Amen. You have hesitation, you're being ruled by your spouse. Yes. And if your spouse goes the other way, you've got to be loyal to an unloyal, you know, unfaithful spouse to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, you're too mean. I'm not too mean, right? I want what's best for you. I want what's best for me. And Lord will always test you through he has to make sure that you're loyal to him. How am I ever going to know he's loyal to me? Right. Unless something happens, right? Word is cheap. You could always tell me that I'm going to be faithful to Lord Jesus Christ. But when actual things and events do happen, that's when we'll find out who you really are. Because people who are loyal, they have this allegiance and they have this conviction. They believe it wholeheartedly. Even though, you know, a lot of things that mafia and mobsters do are, you know, bad deeds, right? Criminal activities. But one thing that they have is they have loyalty, right? Yes. You know, sure they do. will die for their bosses. Right. We're talking about the good ones, not the slimy, hypocrite, backbiting ones, right? Right. We call them what? Snitches, right? Yes. Or tattletales, right? But even during those days, 
even right now, they might not be safe, but they do have certain characteristics that you and I should be ashamed of when we compare our loyalty to Lord Jesus Christ and their loyalty to their bosses, right? They will give everything. They'll give their life. And they'll fight for what they stand for. When was the last time you ever fought for Lord Jesus Christ? Right? Did you ever fight for Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you the type always avoids it? You have to be wise, you know. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Yes. But there's a right way to fight for the right, you know, truthful things. You see this day around the world, everybody's fighting for something, right? Mm -hmm. You have all these protesters everywhere yes. for whatever it is, right? You know, all these political social issues. And some of them don't even know what they're talking about. No. Especially people who stand for like Palestinians, right? right. They don't know what they're talking about. Dang. I mean, this woman out there, clueless, like, oh, you know, Israel, everything's Israel's fault, you know. I mean, we love Israel, you know. Amen. Like God's people. Yes. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then you ask him, do you want to spend at least one month, one week in Palestine in those areas as a woman? And they start, you know, stutter, right? You know, all expenses paid, just go over there, you know. Right. Oh, no, 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 I, loved, I, I like freedom here. Then what are you talking about, right? You don't even know what you're talking about, but, you're, but they're still standing for something, right. right? But as a Christian, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, oh. then you have to stand for Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who else are you going to stand for, right? If your children, if your child is against Lord Jesus Christ, you stand for Lord Jesus Christ instead of your children. Yes. Right? I mean, who's more important to you? Because at the end of the day, what matters is what you've done for Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do right for Lord Jesus Christ, if you're loyal to Lord Jesus Christ, everything else, all the puzzles sets in place. Right? Lord will provide all your need. Lord's going to bless you. But once you change that, puzzle, the head. When head is not the Lord Jesus Christ, you put anything else there, then everything's going to crumble eventually. Amen. Right? You, could, you, could, you could, how should I say, you could fake your way, right? But truth always comes out. Lord always reveals it. Yes. That's why I always preach to you and preach to myself. You play with sin, Lord will reveal it one of these days. Yes. It's not just outward sins that you're committing. The inward sins, right? Amen. All the hatred, all the jealousy, envy, yes. anger, right? Dishonesty, all those things. Eventually, Lord's going to reveal it. Amen. Then you'll be, you'll be, I mean, you gotta, you're going to be hurt. But it's not just only you, though. A lot of times, it's going to impact your families and people around you. And they're going to be hurt as well. That's why selfish Christians don't realize what they're doing right now. When you're not loyal to Jesus Christ, it's going to eventually impact all of your people around you. And some people won't get saved because of you. Can you believe it? The way you are disloyal to Lord Jesus Christ, why should I trust him as my Lord and Savior? Makes all the sense. You know, if you're thinking logically, right? You say he's your Savior. You said he's your Lord. You said he's your everything. But your actions says otherwise. Let's look at some good. Let's look at some good examples, right? Let's look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know the Hebrew young man, right? Let's go to Daniel chapter three. Daniel chapter three. Even in the face of death, they show their allegiance to Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, they to God, right? Daniel chapter three. Daniel chapter three. We look at verses 16 through 18. So they refused to bow down to the golden image. Right? They refused. If that were to happen to you, what would you do? Right? Yeah. You, know, you bow down to me. What if Kamala suddenly goes, you bow down to me? Or that party goes, you bow down to that party or else... You go to jail. You right. die. Yeah. You choose this or you choose Lord Jesus Christ. Literally, that's what happens in any communist countries out there. Yes. 
Yes. You know, Kim Jong Un's of the world. Okay. Are you faithful to me? Are you loyal to me? Or are you loyal to whatever you're believing in? Right. You say anything other than Kim Jong Un, then it's time for you to go to you know concentration camp and die. Yes. Right. Let's look at Daniel chapter three verse sixteen. The Bible says. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Amen. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. That should be our testimony. That should be our answer in any situation when it's between Lord Jesus Christ and anything else. I mean, yes. well, how would you answer, brethren? Right? This loyalty goes way, way beyond your simple, you know, like how should I say, fairy understanding, you know, where some soldier is so loyal to somebody and then they're fighting in the battle for the general. Yeah, that's really good. But how often does that situation happen in your life? Your loyalty is about everyday things that you do. Amen. Right? You have a choice every single day to be loyal to the Lord or to be loyal to the devil, the world, and the flesh. So loyalty requires allegiance. And then secondly, loyalty requires commitment. What kind of commitment, right? God uses people to do his ministry. God used his people to fulfill his wills. See, God used Moses, right? God used Abraham. God used Joshua, Caleb. God used Apostle Paul and everybody else. You have to be committed to the leaders, right? You have to be committed to people that God uses. Well, but what's the problem with human beings? Human beings are full of jealousy and envy. Yes. You know, they start thinking that, you know, I could do better than him. I could do better than her. That's always your thinking. Yes. God doesn't care about your gifts or talents or how well you do it. God only cares about your heart. Amen. When you sing for the Lord, it's all about your heart. This is not like some addition out there. It's just between you and the Lord. Amen. Whether you sing well, whether you don't sing well, it doesn't matter. The Lord gets all the glory. Yes. But you, you're always about yourself, Christian. You're always like, you know, I'm not the, I mean, I could do better than him in everything. Oh, man, that violin, I'm making too many mistakes. I hear it. I could do better than him. Oh, saxophone, you know, trumpet, you know, that piano, right? You know, you're always about, I could do better than the other person. But when it's your turn to do it, you're the old, always one who always makes mistakes. Or you're the one who always shows that haughtiness and pride in your face, right? Yeah. Then who's going to be blessed by it? You are here to praise God and worship the Lord. Right. You're doing it out of your own desires. How is it going to bless anybody? Right. right. I could be the best singer in the whole world, which I'm not, right? I could hit the highest note, which I can't even get close to. And then outside, the worldly people think that, wow, that is the greatest singing I ever heard. But inside and amongst the people, they're like, oh, what is that? Right? You're just trying to show yourself up, right? You're show off. You're proud. You're haughty. Right? Yes. So when it comes to following leaders, the best examples are Joshua and Caleb. When those 12 spies went out, 10 of them came out trembling. Oh, you know, those giants, you know, we're going to die. You know, oh, we're putting the worst place. You, I hate you, Moses. You know, I hate you, everybody. But Joshua and Caleb stood Amen. by Moses, Amen. the leader that God put in place. You know why churches get split, Bible-believing churches? Because devil uses those hearts. Yes. Devil's, devil's looking for hearts where they're always 
complaining, questioning, murmuring, always criticizing, especially leaders. No yeah. pastor, pastor wife ever perfect. Amen. Close, far closest to it. That might be worse than you, right? <laughs> Character wise, sometimes, right? But God put them there because they have the right heart. Amen. Because they will be loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ's cause. Yes. That's it. But you yourself is always having that critical lens in your eyes, uh, right? Like, ah, what's wrong with their hair today? What's wrong with their clothes today? You know? Obviously, if I were to show up with a t-shirt and a short and a flip-flop, you know, and I shouldn't be here, right? right. I mean, you're, you know, you're in the congregation where you want to worship and praise God. Yes. You want to dress modestly. You want to show your best Sunday. Amen. You know, close to the Lord. I mean, if you dress better for Biden and Kamala when they drop by, then something's wrong with you, yeah. right? Like you'll be wearing, oh, if you do that for your graduation of your children, something's wrong with you. Yes. Right? What's more important, right? You know, I mean, gathering together as a brethren, you know, worshiping and praising God, right? Amen. It's up to you, though. You have to grow as a Christian. No one's ever going to, you know, force you to do it. Right. You have to do it. You know, if you do follow, you know, the leaders that set up in our church, if you do it just spitefully, then you're the one who's going to leave anyways. Right. Then my option to you and my suggestion to you is leave early before you cause any more issues, right? Yes. Loyalty, when you see in the Word of God, God works in small amounts of people. Small amounts of people is committed to his cause. Yes. He doesn't want a whole lot and whole lot of people, right? The revival days are gone. We're in Laodicean age. Amen. Only revival comes from within, right? Yes. You know, days of Billy Sundays was like the last days, right? Yes. So it's individual revival that comes from within. Amen. Then you yourself have to really see, am I really loyal to the leaders, right? That God has put in place. We have... You know, if we didn't care about all, if, if we didn't preach like this and we accepted every sin out there, right, then our church, I guarantee, because I've been here, you know, for like 26 years plus, we'll have, we'll, we'll have had to move, guarantee. It will be standing room only. Yeah. Because people love that stuff. People love itching ear stuff. Yes. You're the best brother. You're the best sister. Yes. You know, Yeah. You have something against them, it's their fault. And the other person, yeah, it's their fault. Right? You know? You're good, right? You know. Yeah. I mean, everything you tell me is right. You know. All the criticism, like murmuring you say, is right. You know. Let's hurt the body of Christ. But it's okay. You know. Number one thing is always about growing numbers, growing the church. You know, that's not our church though. Amen. You know, starting with, you know. I don't, I'm not going to put like someone on the pedestal, but just, you know, exampling find the character. You know, Pastor Senior Kim, who's the father of, you know, Pastor Jin Kim. You know, one thing that I always am amazed and I try to emulate is his loyalty. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you fail. It doesn't matter if you succeed. He's always standing by you as long as you stand for the right things, right? Yes. King James Bible, Bible, right doctrine and you wholeheartedly, you know, follow, right? That's the only thing God wants. God wants you, whether you follow wholeheartedly or not. Because everybody makes mistakes. Yes. If you can, if you have to change leaders every time you see someone makes mistake, then you will never have a right leader. You will never be stuck with one leader, right? Right. Everybody makes mistake. But is God using that person? That's the most important question. Is God using that person to do his will. It's God using the person who's standing for what's right. That's why a lot of people, they get confused because they don't know the right Bible, they have a, no backbone, and they don't stand for what's right. So if they hear some rumors about somebody, they get swayed very easily. Not even looking at both sides, not even looking at what's right or wrong, you get swayed. You know, that's why in the, the rumors kill people, even yes. before, you know, the verdict, right? I mean, this person didn't do anything wrong, but he's accused of certain, you know, crimes, and the media out there, 
antagonizes him and makes him the monster, then everybody thinks he's that monster. And the verdict happens that he's 100% innocent, but that thought doesn't disappear from that person. They become hesitant, right? I mean, same thing with a lot of Christians, you know. All you're about is gossip. All you're about is rumor. All you're about is just murmur and complaining. Amen. You, you, have, you don't even have enough time to say good things about people. But all you want to do is talk about bad things. Right. Bad things, right? Oh, man, if it's legit, you know, that's why you got put leader in place. So you come and talk to me, right? Yes. Or you talk to that person one-on-one. You never talk to another, another person about another person's issues. Right. Right? Amen. Just be a man, be a woman. If you have any issues, talk to each other one on one. If that's hard, then you ask me. Then I'll be there to help out with the you know, mediation process. That's what pastors and pastor wives are for. But you know, you start doing that, then churches will just split eventually. Right? He says, she says, oh, pastor's only for that family, not, not for that family, you know, playing favoritism, blah, blah, blah. You're just digging your own grave, right? Yeah. But if you know that you're that type of person and you know you will not change, the door's wide open. Yes. Just go to, there, there are plenty of churches out there, I tell you, like Joel Austin's of the world, right? T.D. Jakes, everybody, just come. Just come. I'll never talk about your sins. Right. Right? Make sure you tithe. Make sure, make sure, you know, you give money. Come, come, come. And there are plenty of churches out there. I mean, at the end of the day, if I were in your shoes, why do you want to be preached at in the first place? Right? Yeah. I mean, it's not like, you know, you're listening to like a, cherry pie, apple pie, peach pie, peach cobbler type of message, right? No. You know, it makes you feel good and stuff, right? I mean, is that your determination to stick it out even though I don't agree, I don't follow, I don't believe? Or, you know, I'm going to say how I last here, right? If you don't love the truth, if you don't love King James Bible and Stanford King James Bible, and if you're not even saved, right. there's no way you're going to last. No. I'm just giving you a fair warning, right? Amen. You, all you're going to say is complaining. There's no love amongst the brethren. Right. You know? They don't say hi to me, right? <laughs> you know? They're, they're I, Kante, you know? It's not the best, right? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Bible says you're less than nothing. Yes. I'm less than nothing. We're just sinners saved by grace. Amen. Shouldn't you show your charity to others yes. instead of always trying to receive? The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, right? Yes. Pray that you be a cheerful giver. Amen. Not just you know, monetarily, but in all your actions. Just like 1 Corinthians chapter 13, charity chapter. Practice those instead Amen. of always you know, trying to be center of attention. God does not use people who like to be center of attention, I'll tell you that. Right? Moses, he's like, I don't want to do this. I can't talk that well, right? But I said, you do it, you know, because I know you're going to rely on me for everything, Amen. right? So when you start complaining, when you start having rebellious thoughts towards the leaders of the church, the pastors and pastor's wife, Eventually, Lord's going to judge you. I mean, Lord judge, you know, Miriam, right? Miriam, the sister, own family, right? So if, if Lord's going to judge the family member of the leader, he's going to judge everybody else, right? Mm-hmm. Don't think that you're that special person. Just because you go out there, I, I pass out tracks every single day, you know. I lead people to the Lord all the time. That's your pride talking, right? Lord's the one who gives you harvest, you could pass out a million tracts and zero person could be saved. Yeah. But doesn't mean that you weren't doing what God wanted you to do. I mean, that's what's happening like in countries like Japan, right? They're so self-righteous, they don't get saved. Yes. But Lord still is, you know, sowing the words everywhere. So you, you don't ever get haughty. Oh, you know, 
sometimes people think like this. You know what? I led like five people to the Lord this week. I wonder how many pastors led. <laughs> hmm. I wonder, you know, how many that so-and-so brother, you know, he used to testify leading a lot of people to the Lord, but now he's been kind of quiet, right? So I wonder how many he's leading to the Lord. Man, you start become, you're, you're judging everybody now, yeah. right? You're like, you know, you're comparing everybody. One thing you should never do, don't ever compare anybody. Don't compare leaders either. Yeah. Each ministry is different, right? You know, God put leaders in different spots. That's why I discourage you, just like the one of the pastors said, Pastor Aaron Kogel, to have a multiple heads, right? If you're in a local church, that's your head. Follow. Yes. Don't be like, oh, you know, not this way. I'm going to the internet preacher over there <laughs> this way. And I like, I, I like their, you know, title over there this way, you know. Where are the aliens, you know. You're, like, you're into like a deeper stuff this way. Oh, where are the aliens, right? Oh, where the, how did the pyramid get built, you know. Like you're looking at those, right? You know, that was the point, right? In order for you to really be used by God, God uses people who are loyal in the local church. That's who he uses, right? And you don't have anyone, please pray, right? We'll pray for you that there will be local churches around you, right? But that's whom God uses because when you get tested under pressure, it will really show who you are loyal to, right? Think about a lot of times during the wars, right? Prisoner of wars, they get tortured all the time because they want that information from the other person. But we have so many loyal soldiers out there. Thank God for them. They stood for their own country, especially for us. We have this freedom by grace of God and because of, you know, military men out there and women. And they stood for what they believed in. They're in like somewhere you know, in the World War II, in the prison camp, they were still standing. Even if, you know, their fingers are getting cut off, right? They're becoming maimed, you know, their eyes are being, you know, taken out. They still, still stood for their country, right? Yes. I mean, we have Christians out there who die for Jesus Christ all the time. I told you many times, but this is a... I mean, something that has to remind me on a daily daily basis, we have Christians in North Korea who get killed lying down, feet first, run over by bulldozers, hearing every crack of their bones until it reaches their upper body and then runs over them. Why? Because they are standing for Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that's loyalty. And... Many times, they will not desert their leaders either. Whoever their pastors or missionaries are, they stand for them. Because there's always going to be a snitches everywhere, right? That's a human nature. When things get tough, all you're going to do is, oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, at think about all the world wars, right? You know, there's always some snitch tattletale out there who tells people, Gustavo's police everywhere, whatever they call it, where they are hiding. Yes. Right? I don't know about you. If you get billion dollars, and if we're in that situation, are you going to sell out your brothers and sisters in Christ? Are you going to sell out your pastors and pastor's wife? Are you going to sell out your own family? Right? Not immediate. Maybe, you know, your second cousin, third cousin. What do you think? If there's a 50 million in front of you, to deny your faith and not be loyal to Lord Jesus Christ and the folks who's following. I mean, Apostle Paul said, be followers of me, yes. even as I am of also of Jesus Christ. Right. You follow people who follow Jesus Christ. Amen. That's loyalty. I mean, Elisha followed Elijah. One time he said, don't come, but he said, I'm going to go no matter what. I mean, are you going to be that type of person? Or are you going to be the person always swayed 
you know, by your own feelings and own pleasures and own desires. It's like loyalty means nothing to me. That's 99% of the whole world, I'm telling you. Yes. You know, even if you say the worst thing, even if you say the most horrible thing about Pastor Senior Kim, I'm going to say shut your mouth because I'm going to stand for him because he stood for what's right all these years and God still uses him. Yes. I mean, that's, a, that's how you got to be. Obviously, you pray, and then, you know, if somebody really, you know, gets into apostasy and falls away from the truth, Lord's going to show it to you. Then you have to be wise about it. But as long as someone stands for the right and the truth and leading the local church, are you, are you not going to stand for that person? Where's your standard, right? Do you even have a standard, Christian? Is your standard whoever makes me feel good? Is your standard whoever makes and, you know, make sure that I'm noticed? Is that your standard? And I'm only going to go to a church where pastor acknowledges and applauds and recognizes and commands me. Is that where you want to go? No. There are plenty out there. Get out of here, right? You don't have to stay here, right? You're like, why are you so mean? I'm not. I want what's best for the local church. It's a blood-bought church, body of Christ, yes. nothing to be played around by a carnal Christians. Right. And our job as pastors is to protect it the best way we can as the Lord gives His grace and mercy. Amen. That's why people who truly want to grow in the Word of God, people who are truly loyal, there are very few. And far in between. You know, my expectation for you isn't that high. Because the expectation for me isn't that high. Because I'm always going to fail. You will always fail. Yes. But one thing that I can hang on to by the grace of God is that I'm wholeheartedly going to stand for Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to wholeheartedly stand for Pastor Kim and Mrs. Kim. Yeah. No matter what happens. That's, yeah. that's it. That's when Lord has blessed me beyond measures, just for that one stance that I have, right? And as a Christian, you need to have a stand. You need to be loyal. And then once you have your made up your mind, I'm gonna be a legion, I'm gonna be, I'm convicted, I'm committed in serving the Lord and in the local church, then you just do it. Yes. Well, don't stop. You know, you're going to fall, I'm going to fall, get up, and continue to do it. Amen. If anybody ever criticizes in the wrong way, then you send up. Are you the type of person when someone cusses your mom and dad and just going to start staying and sitting on your butt and just listen? I know you won't. You'll stand up and you'll start fighting that person. You'll be like, what would you say about my mom, right? Yeah. What would you say about my dad, you know, even your family? What would you say about my wife? My husband, right? Yes. You do that for your family. But when will you ever have that deep conviction and wholeheartedness for Lord Jesus Christ, right. leaders of the church? You know, people stand for what's right and wrong. Loyalty. Do you want the lasting loyalty? You have to continue and you have to truly, truly, not to get saved, but you will truly endure until the end. Until the Lord comes back with your loyalty. Let's pray. Dear Father, too many days go by. And, I mean, I confess where we lack loyalty. You died for us on the cross, shedding your precious blood, undeserving sinners. And what do we do, Lord? We always deny you. We run away from the truth. And we don't even stand for you. Help us to reflect on our Christian walk and life. Get right with you, Lord. And truly have that loyalty. And if any one of us had this murmuring, complaining thoughts toward the people that you set up to lead, the local churches, the flocks, Lord, I pray that those rebellious hearts will be gone. People get right as well, Lord. I pray that we'll be found not faithful only, but loyal to you, Lord. We want to stand for you in everything that we do, 
not just at home, but outside, external, so that we'll be a strong and good testimony for you. I pray that anyone who's not saved, Lord, I pray that they open their heart and let this be the day of salvation. Bless the rest of the services. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.